Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's the second part of working on this, uh, this Hewlett Packard uh, digital voltmeter made back in the late 50s. Uh, so, what we got to do today is uh, got all the parts in. First bad wave of parts, should I say. Anyway, we got to change this old boy right there. So, shouldn't be a big deal to get it out so that's going to be my next step I'm going to take a couple of pictures make some uh, notes and then I'll get to removing it and you'll see me after I get it removed but got a finger in the way how amateurs that's what I got to do is right there let me do that and I'll bring you back the next phase all right I got all the uh, components taken off of the uh, and the leads taken off the uh, all the capacitor, uh, you had a ground right here, which is this guy going here, and a 470K right here to here. Got that done, so all my little tabs and everything is ready to go. So, oh, look what I found. Huh. What that came off of. Anyway, these are pretty self explanatory. You just take a pair of good strong pair of needle nose you come in here and you push you kind of twist twist this right here a little bit back and forth and you got to put pressure on the other side which means I got to have both hands to do this put a little pressure on there you want to get the little tabs it's hard to see on this right here I'll show you when you get the capacitor out but uh, you got to just bend it a little bit there just not much to get these tabs free so let me get all this done I can't do this with holding this camera so I don't want to be shaky cam you know either so I need both hands to do this so I'll bring you back when I get the capacitor out ain't no big deal a hard shot to get in the frame here I'm not sure you guys can see it and everything but I decided since the last little segment show you kind of what I'm trying to do here in case you've never pulled one of these things out get you a little bit of light in here if I can make this light work there you go all right I think everything's in the frame so I'm holding the top of the capacitor with my hand my left hand and I'm putting a little pressure on it and wiggling it just a little bit let me see how that shot looks right there I'm wiggling it, I'm twisting the lead just a little bit, and I can feel it when it guts loose. I'm watching those little ears, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now, I'm taking this one off right here, so I'm doing the same thing. I'm pushing the can, I'm kind of pulling the can toward me in relationship to this particular uh, tab. So I've got a little pressure on it, just twisting it a little bit, and what I'm trying to do, and I'll show you in just a minute. It feel like it's got a little bit of solder on it. All right, uh, you may or may not be able to see. You see that wiggling already? So now I got that light again. Now I'm going to push it now this way, the top of the capacitor this way, and not a whole lot of pressure, just enough to put a little bias on it. So I can get these little ears, and I felt that one go. So look at there now. Now I got three of them done. I just got one more to do. Twisting it. All of them wants to let go except one. Probably because it had a little bit of solder on it. Alright, let's see. There it is. It is out. The um, half moon is here, the square is here, triangle is here, and then the no marking is facing up in relationship to that. There she is. It's a spray capacitor 18-42 HP. I 
guess that's the HP number right there, 0180-0025 as you can see. The values are 20 at 450, 20 at 450, 20 at 450, 20 at 450, can, common, negative. Uh, 21st week of 1960, I'll read that date code right. Somebody can correct me if they want to. But anyway, that's the dude that's bad. And uh, if you look right around, let me find it. Right around this guy here, you can see it. You see it right there. It's starting to, all the stuff starting to squish out. Of, oh, I'm sorry. Right there, all the stuff's coming out of it. You can reform these all you want. But this capacitor is bad. Anyway, time to restuff. You've already seen me do that a couple of times. I'm going to subject you to it no more. All right, it took me about five minutes to do that. One of the easiest ones I've done. Thing smelled like a di baby diaper full of poop there, though. That's it right there, guys. That is the whole capacitor right there. Any of uh, cap restuffers wants this, just let me know in the comments and I'll be glad to send you this section here and y'all can reform it and, and just have fun with it. Um, anyway, thanks. Ooh. But basically I just um, used a heat gun on it and just rolled it and kept heating it all, the whole thing. Uh, Gave it a little while, heated it, just give it a little time, and that tar will finally let go. And it, this one actually is one of the easiest ones I've ever had to pull out. So now I just got to go in there and clip, get in there and clip all this stuff out. I'll drill some little bitty holes in here, clean the uh, inside of the can. And y'all know you can't probably see that, but need to clean the inside of that just a little bit which means I got to heat this up a little bit more and get the residue out of there that ain't no pew stinks Man, just like a baby poo pooed in this diaper well think about it when y'all guys when y'all if y'all ever do one of these and y'all heat it up and all that and you pull you pull on these legs right here is what I have to do but you don't go like a gorilla on these things you got to know when to do it and when not to do it, because um, they'll pull out and they'll damage they'll damage the surrounding on it too. You got to know when to do it and how to do it. And you just got to have a feel. It's, I don't know how to explain it. Anyway, let me get this thing and get these tabs off here, or I can. Uh, another thing, use gloves. Who knows what's in this stuff, man? Don't. Try not to use your bare hands. Uh, I'm wearing gloves right now. So I'm going to get this thing all pulled apart, get it cut out, get it prepped, put the new caps on it, make sure they're all the same value so I shouldn't have to worry about getting the wrong one in the wrong play. So let me get all that done and I'll be back. All right. I got a Reformer's uh, Dream right here, an intact electrolytic. Just cut the tabs off. So anybody wants it, they can have it. Pay shipping. Anyway, this is what I'm after right here. And you can't see it from a glove. That's the part I'm after right there. Perfectly preserved. So I'll drill holes, tiny holes in here where the leads of the pastures can go through. I'll wrap them around the, uh, the terminals securely. Solder them up, stick it all back together. Ready to roll. So there we are. Be right back. Okay, it stinks in here. I want to open up the door, but it's blazing hot out there today. I don't really want to do that either. The last two days I've been working in my regular job. I've been working out in the field fixing air conditioners for two days. I had to unload a shipment this, after, this morning full of material. And uh, of course, I like to die, I'd burn up on that. It's, Supposed to be 101 here in Louisiana today. 
think the heat index is probably 115 if I had to guess I'm going to clean the base of this thing before I, before I go further I'll clean my pinch off and everything so I don't have to have gloves anymore but I need to clean some of the solder off this and clean these terminals up first I forgot to do. Be very careful with these things. These things are fragile. Once you pull them loose from their where they come from, they're very fragile. Let me clean. I'm gonna do it the old-fashioned way seen anybody do it like that. Yeah, I know they're fragile, but I'm not going to hurt it doing this right here. It's the easiest way I know to clean something. Just clean all that solder off. Get it all pretty. Any residue. There. Good to go. in frame there. Next thing I'm going to do is point you down a little bit more. Zoom in a little bit more. You zoom me in too much. Next thing I'm going to do get the old Dremel out and before you use operate power tools be sure and wear your PPE personal protective equipment. Uh, if you operate power machinery and you watch me do it and something like this and you want to imitate me or do better than me which is fine you're doing so at your own risk just saying what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go right in behind this terminal and go straight down and I'll try to show you when I get done Now, show you what I did on this side, okay? I'm sure y'all know already, I'm sorry. Right there, point you down to focus, let's focus. Right there is a hole. A hole right there, and a hole right there, and a hole right there. Turn it over. The holes you can see barely right there, 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 there. Big enough for a capacitor lead to go through. Now, the one thing I hadn't drilled yet, uh, is another hole for the ground to come back. So I got to do that next. So with that in mind, I got to change bit. If I'm gonna leave that bit in there, I'm gonna use it as a pilot bit. I love my Dremel. Christmas present two years ago. That bit I used was a 364th bit. But now I'm going to drill a 764th bit, I mean hole, so my ground lead can come through that. And I'll show you how I do that here in a minute. Gotta have a Dremel. You're going to do anything like this. There. Done. Done with the Dremel. Let me get that out of the way. I say it stinks in here. It stinks in here. Alright, there you are. There's your hole right there for your ground. So I'm going to put this capacitor together. I ain't going to let you watch me, but when I get it all done, get ready to put back in, I'll, uh, I'll bring you back. All right. Um, one other thing before I get carried away with this, um, I wanted to show you uh, 
there's a the can all clearing out. I don't know if you can see it or not, but take my word for it. It's cleaned out. I think I got myself telephoto just a little bit. There we go. I wonder what was wrong with it. Anyway, the capacitors that I'm using are 10 millimeter in diameter. Right here. I've got four of these dudes. They're 105 degrees centigrade uh, capacitors. Uh, I think they're 17 centimeters long, uh, millimeters long. I think. Or 18. I'm 18 millimeter long. I think 0.45 spacing, I think. But the big thing is that the diameter is 10 millimeter. That way, let me show you. Treat you like you've never done this before. You can group them small like that to where they will fit. And you can see in the can. You don't want to just go get four big capacitors that big around. That ain't going to work. Anyway, I'm going to put them in there and uh, I'll bring you back. Okay, there you go. Let's turn you around and get a little more light. There you go. There's your capacitors. Got this little lead, but that's your ground lead because you can't solder to aluminum. So this is the ground lead uh, connected to the common of all four capacitors. This will just kind of loop out and go back to one of these tabs here that's got the hole in it. Boom. Done. Anyway, I'm going to put it back in the uh, test uh, device there and uh, put all that together and uh, move on to the rest. All right. I have the uh, C85 completely rebuilt. I'm just not going to call it restuffed anymore. We're going to call it rebuilt. Anyway, there it is right there, the capacitor. That little black wire you see right there is the ground going over here to this tab. Uh, everything's in place. I changed that 33 ohm resistor right here, which measured 20, I'm sorry, almost 50 ohms. So everything is in place right here. Uh, replaces 470K resistor here, half watt, simply because the lead wasn't long enough to re you know, do it. Just more trouble than it's worth. So that's the uh, power supply. We're about to plug it back in and uh, see if it made any difference on the uh, voltages on the power supply. So let me get set up for that. All right, I'm going to test for shorts first. I can't hear the beeper on this thing. I think the beeper's gone. Anyway, that is no shorts. No shorts. No shorts. No shorts. They're all reading about 1,800 ohms. Now that's a good thing. I had to fix my meter lead that somebody bent. Trying to find a convenient place to put the ground on this here meter. There we go. Alright, so let me get everything hooked up. I'm just going to bypass the uh, dim ball tester. Go straight to. I'm just going to go straight to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the uh, B plus as it comes out of the rectifier, which should be right here on this 33 ohm resistor. Yeah, a crap load of glare on there, I know. All right, let's bring it up, see what happens. Uh, it's turned on. Let's see, on, on, on. Here we go. Powered up. Quite a bit of current, but it's dropping down. We're about uh, a little less, about 5.5.6 point. We have 260 volts, 258, everything's warming up. We are drawing. about 1.1 amps and we have 366 volts B plus
367. So I wonder what's up with that. 367 volts. So 367 coming in. 364 on the other side. That's a lot better than it was. 120 on whatever that does. Yeah, there's 255 on whatever that is. That's 297 volts right there. Okay. Get my schematic. Digits are working, some ain't. I should have 400 volts. I should have 400 volts on this power supply. I'm wondering what's up with that. I'm going to bore the voltmeter. I need it more than you guys do. So, I should have more B plus than that. I have 308 volts there. So I'm looking at C30 and CR20, CR29 and CR30. Red white wire right there. 381 volts. I may have something wire grown on this thing. There's my 383. Okay. So if I'm supposed to have 400 volts here, I'm not. It's not making it. I need to find the anode. Uh, CR26 and CR23 and measure from ground there see if we have 300 volts AC there's my 383 there's the anode of that one I gotta point this meter up let's see if we got 300 and we may have something else going on here we have 300 on that one there We have 300 there. So we have 300 volts AC going to the input of the rectifiers, but we only have, we should have 400 volts, what I'm told, on the output of the rectifiers. So either I have weak diodes or we have a load, something loading this thing down. That's interesting. So let's see, here's another one here. 120 volts, uh, let's see, that would be C58A. I remember 120 volts just a minute ago. There's 124. So yes, that's good. So. I'm wondering, Let's look on the output of B16, the 12B4A regulator. That regulator may be souped up a little too much. You gotta look for 250 volts. It's on D. Two 
255.8 I'm thinking R129 is the B plus regulation yes so I need to adjust this resistor variable resistor here drop that voltage down I think that power supply might be uh, let's drop that 255 down here without shorting something out. There we are. We're at 250 volts now. Let's see if it brought our B plus up. Not really, but it did bring it up to 383. and 83 volts 379 on the other end of R132 that should be 400 volts does it tell me how much voltage I should get on the other side of this, but I'm wondering if we got some weak rectifiers. It's either that or something's loading this circuit down. If you don't know what I'm talking about here, I can do this, I get electrocuted. This is the power supply. And here's the uh, power supply transformer on the secondary right here, 300 volts AC here and 300 volts AC there, reference to ground. And I measure 300 here and I measure 300 there. However, you come over here to this right here, I'm only measuring 200 and, I'm sorry, 383 volts. It should be 400 over here on the plate of this regulator and I'm not getting that. So either something's loading that down or I have a rectifier that might be bad in here. Because this is one of the capacitors we change here. So it's possible one of these diodes are bad. Uh, see that or something's loading it down. What could be loading it down? That's a good question. That's a good question. That means I have to get a total schematic. Get the total schematic, should I say. And start measuring voltage and all over the place to see if I can find a voltage that's unusual and to see if it's pulling something down because it ain't like it tells me what the voltage measurements are on this thing. So, but I figured that it's going to be one problem into another, you know. So, I haven't changed the other components yet, so that's not what's causing this problem. Um, So that's what I'm going to do next, is just make a, get a bunch of uh, voltage measurements. So. Everything seems to be running cool. Except for the fan. The fan don't seem to be working. I guess the fan, oh, the fan's unplugged. I think I must have unplugged it, so it's so noisy. I don't know, let me think on this. I'm going to uh, probably test those rectifiers too in the power supply just for fun. But I got to, I'm going to, I'm going to shut you down for that and I'm um, going to turn this off a minute and let it, let it bleed down. And I'm just going to do some ohm checks on those rectifiers. So I'll be back shortly. Okay, this, uh, this honestly don't know if I trust this schematic. Because it's telling me C80, I guess it's just telling me C85, and the other side of the schematic says C58. But I guess it's a typo, you know. I've seen typos like that before. But anyway, it's telling me that on the plate of that um, that regulator, I should have 400 volt. I 
I checked all the diodes in the rectifier section, they're uh, you know, silicon diodes, and they checked okay. So it tells me to look at 300 volts on C58C. So, should be 300 volts somewhere. There's 309, 250, 120, more or less. I don't see any evidence of, uh, I don't really see any evidence of anything odd other than that 400 volts is not there, but every all the voltages are where they're supposed to be. I say we'll move on. There's no evidence of it drawing too much current, or on the, it's only, what, uh, 17 volts low? I don't know why. Could be my line voltage. Drawing quite a bit of current. I'm drawing 1.1 one, one, two, no, one 1.27 amps. That's pretty good actually. We were drawing a lot more than that yesterday. Well, I'm sorry, the day before. So let's move on. Let's uh, let's move on. Uh, I haven't changed any of the other caps that that I replaced the other day temporarily. Uh, I don't think that's causing an issue. So now, so okay, I'm past the power supply. Now what do I do? Will this thing read? Will it read a voltage? Let me clean up my bench because it's bugging me and uh, get ready for the next uh, round of tests. I'll be right back. All right, uh, just for grids and wiggles, I moved it around a little bit. Doesn't act like it's sampling. It's not working right. But I'm going to put a voltage in it. See what it does. So I'm going to run it up to 20 volts. See what happens. I know, I'm in the way. It acts like it's not sampling. Showing 11 volts, and I'm right about 12. Bring it up to 16 volts on the bench, see what happens. Measuring. Sure did, it's measuring. I'll be dang. Bring it up to 24. Yeah, the two ain't working. You gotta figure that out. Showing. Doing something. Well, be dang. I think it's working halfway. We got a two that's out. So I guess let's start there. Let's figure out why that tube is, that first set of digits are missing. First set of digits are missing and the second last digit is missing. So, but it is registering. That's way interesting. I'm going to drop it down to about 8 volts. So 
be the first set of digits, so I'm working on the counting down. One of my eight bolts on a DC input to this thing. Still something ain't right to hint now. One whole side of this tube is not working on this first digit here. Bring it back up to 20 volts, see what happens. Digit. That's crazy. It's got a stepper in here. Now I don't know exactly how all this stuff works together. I'll be honest with you. I do know it had a power supply problem. We've got that taken care of. It's running a lot cooler now. It was running really hot before. Run it to 24 volts. So I guess I need to uh, I mean it is running warm because of all the tubes and stuff of course you know and these things are not perfectly I hear something just a kicking in here so I guess let's go ahead and change the capacitors that I ordered for it, get all that changed out so we can move on from that. Um, then I have to sit down and figure out how this thing actually works and figure out what's up with the Nixies. I have a feeling we were low on voltage on those Nixies, but I don't know. Don't know. Don't know that at all. So New territory here. Get all the half side of these digits in this first tube is not right. Like it's supposed to be zero there, and only half of them are showing up. There's still two sets of. Uh, Two more electrolytics that I have not changed, so I've got to make see what that is, and make sure that's working. Like we could have a bad power supply there, and that could be affecting the display too. So I don't know. I don't want to figure this out in front of you guys. I want to sit down and read about it, and I'll make some measure, tell you what I'm measuring, why I'm measuring it, and see how it works out. And we'll just keep moving from there. So bring you back when I figure out something. Okay. <clears throat> Everything, all the capacitors, extra capacitors have been changed. Uh, you know about this one already, the filter, the main filter capacitor. Uh, let's see here. Oh. This is uh, this one here is the uh, 470. That's the 470 uh, picofarad. Uh, this one here is uh, the 0.0022. And then this right here is a point zero one zero zero one five, I think, and a point zero zero three three, I believe. And then here is that point one across the oven. And let's see what else. Missing. Oh, here's the eight microfarad, which is an eleven microfarad now. That is a minus hundred and fifty volt power supply. So all the capacitors that I bought have been changed. So let me get this thing set back up and let's do a little more checking like power supplies and things like that. Alright, I got it. I got it in its normal operating position. And I've got everything put back together. 
Got the cheater core plugged in the back, so applying power. Sound like a pinball machine. All right, so let's uh, let's plug some voltage into it. I guess this is a, just a DC only power supply. I mean, a uh, voltmeter. All right, power supply's hooked up. No voltage coming out of it yet. So let's run it up to about four volts. Apparently, this is, that noise you're hearing is a stepper motor right here. Now, I don't know if I've cleaned that. I may, we may have to clean the contacts on that. I still don't know enough about this to know what the hell I'm doing. It is sampling of some sort. Measure, let's run it up to about 12 volts. Yeah, there it is. It finally made it to 12 volts. Then when it works and not click clacking, it does measure. Let's bring it up to 20 amps or 16 volts. Very quietly brought it up to 16. Bringing it up to 20. Showing a 20 when it when it works. There's 24 volts. Now, I don't know much about these things. I've got some tubes. Apparently I went through and checked some of these tubes and one of these were bad. I don't know if you could substitute these modules or not. They all the same part number. So let's tell you what. This one's working. This one's not working. Let's just turn it off a minute. Swap these two modules and see what happens. See if that four follows. Let's, see. let's just see what happens. Oops. Wrong switch. All right, let's just swap these modules see what happens, okay? Remember how to pull these things. I think they're dual, they've got dual sockets on them. You can grab something and grab the bag here. There we go. Yeah, dual sockets on the back. That's a decade counter. There's the little Nixie. It's got a bunch of, uh, looks like, 12 AU7 there. 5963s. So that's the Jan version of the, I guess, 12 AU7. So let's move these two. I don't know if they're the same or not. I'll pull it out without breaking something. A curious mark makes this look so easy. be a tragedy to break one of these bulbs. I 
Honestly, I'll tell you guys, I don't know much about these things. I'm kind of, I'm kind of just figuring this out as I go. I don't know if these cards are made for these slots or if you can just substitute them. I do not know. Don't have a clue. I'm powered up. Couldn't tell you. That's 24 volts there. Showing six. I don't know what the hell is doing. Put it up to twenty. That's twenty volts right there. Let's see that four is working. This one. That one is just not. I don't know. And this Nixie tube over here, I don't know what the heck it's doing. It acts like it's got some bad filaments in it. What it acts like. I know nothing about these. Well, it's showing plus 441. I have no idea. Got to be an easier way to pull these things. Bench went everywhere, didn't it? Marked, by the way. So I, don't, I don't remember if I marked them or somebody else did. I don't know if there's these things are programmed for each, this, each one of these slots. I do not know. If I can get a grab on this stupid thing. That ain't doing nothing. Well, I don't want to do that all damn day. So let's see. Are there any differences in these things? There is a difference. There's a resistor there. It's not. Resistor on this one, it's not on this one.
That's the only difference I saw. Boy, did they operate different, didn't they? This board and this board here, number one and number three, it's got that same resistor on it, like a uh, five point. Can't read that without my glasses. Like a fifty six meg. Wow. I don't know. I don't know if my uh, tube tester will check uh, mixies. Totally don't know crap about these things. Decade counters, what they call them. But let's see. These say it's all the tubes are good on that one. No X's on them. This one here got two X's marked on these two tubes right here. This says a 12 AU7 here, then 5963s on these three. They are different. See that? However, on these guys, they're all 5963s. All of them. The plates are smaller on this 12AU7. But those two tubes are marked bad right here. I don't know. I got to think about this. All right, it's the next day here at the uh, at the TV shop. Uh, this has proven to be quite a challenge. The uh, after letting it run yesterday for a while, I. Uh, Checking a few things and looking at a few things and playing with it. I actually put a uh, reverse voltage in there and it didn't seem to work too well with the reverse voltage. Uh, this thing has, <clears throat> let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18 volts of uh, tubes, 18 tubes on the chassis with another 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. I have 30 tubes, not counting the Nixies in this thing. So there's 30 tubes in this stupid thing. I have two of them here on this decade counter module that are marked bad 
Uh, where I'm at now is I don't know. I, I read a, I watched a video yesterday. Usagi. Um, oh, can't think of his what, uh, YouTube now. Usagi Electronics, I think. He had actually worked on one like this, and he actually was able to test one on his bench using. But you got to have got to have filament voltage. You got to have six uh, three hundred volts. You got to have a way to trigger the input to it. But he was able to make each one of them count, to do a stair step count. And that's uh, what I would like to do with these modules to test each one of them individually. Because honestly, I don't know exactly what's going on here. It's got a ton, it has a ton of troubleshooting procedures on this thing. Um, using oscilloscope and all kinds of stuff. But I wanted to show you guys right here that uh, this is the voltage check voltage list of all the voltages uh, on this on this uh, rig and pretty much all the voltages kind of matched um, were pretty spot on but as I ran it I noticed that this capacitor right here very 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 hot in the middle and this one was warm but this one was hot so I have a feeling that one's bad I was going to show you those two capacitors, but they're a voltage doubler, if I remember right. No, they're not. I'm sorry. Let's just look at it on the schematic. I think I have it still pulled up here. Mm, I think. Well, let's see, I got to find it. Oh, here they are. C64 and C65 right here. They're not voltage doublers. But they do control the minus 140 volts. Um, but one of these two are getting really hot. So I think they're bad. I'm about to pull them loose and check them. And if they're bad, I'm going to go ahead and get some replacements for it. And I probably won't stuff these two. I'll probably just discrete component these right here. But that's the next phase in the project is me checking these two capacitors. Because one of them is definitely super leaky. Uh, and any time you got leakage like that, it's a resistance instead of a capacitance. And it does load the circuit. And no telling what that loading does and what that's doing is 140 volts. Uh, so and this minus 140, minus 150 right here. Uh, will affect the 250 volt and it's possible it could affect this right here which could affect why well, I'm not getting the 400 here instead of three I got 380 something volts instead of 400 so this is the 8 microfarad we changed yesterday but these two guys right here that's next that's on, next on my list to t test so I'll bring you back when I figure that out Okay, um, the two capacitors, C64 and C65, are right here. One here, this is C64, C65. They're single section capacitors, um, Hewlett Packard style, which means, um, well, don't mean anything. I don't know why I said that. Anyway, I got them, I got the leads pulled loose off of them right now. So, I'm about to uh, put the SIN core on it first. See if I find my test lead. Just barely, barely. Big enough. Set up the test lead, and I don't think there's no point in you uh, seeing the uh, me clip onto the component. Okay, you can either watch me clip onto the component, or you can watch the uh, results. So if you'll bear with me just a second, I'm going to zoom you in to see the. Uh, there you go, right there. Let's see if I can not blow up my meter today. So, hey, look there. I can get over there pretty good before y'all see me. I'm going to move it over just a little bit. We're going to check it on the sync core first. And then uh, we'll switch over to the heat kit. So it's aluminum electrolytic. And it's 20 microfarad. 
Uh, I forgot what the test voltage was. 450 volts, I think. Let me check that. Yeah, 20 microfarad at 450 volts. So I programmed in the uh, value. Now I got to put in the volts. 450 volts. Ready to go on that capacitor. So here we go. We're going to do the capacitor. It says actually 24.7 microfarad. Is the ESR on it? Yeah, it says good ESR. 1.85 ohms. It's going to make a liar out of me. All right, here comes the leakage. Greater than 20 milliamps, less than 22 and a half K. Let's see. So the ESR check good, but that don't mean it is good. The value was a little not very high, but the leakage was the issue and that's the leakage that I was looking for. So I'm moving on over to the second capacitor as soon as I can get a connection here on this test lead. we do the same exact thing now. Same exact value, 20 microfarad at 450 volts. We're going to test it again. This one's checking 27.4. This is the one that was closest uh, I'm sorry, this is the farthest away from the transformer. Anyway. 27 microfarad, so let's do with the ESR, which I think is useless in this case, 2.2 ohms. All right, here comes the leakage. See how it's doing? Greater than 20 milliamps, less than 22.5 K. It don't like that thing at all. Those two capacitors fail Syncor test. Let's put it on the old heat kit. Let me get you turned around here. Shaky cam. This ain't shaky cam, it's sense around. Anybody remember that? old Universal Studios had years ago sensor around it just basically a lot of low frequency bass big speakers anyway uh, we want to check the uh, value first and so let's see let's hook this up we'll put it on C64 first and then we're we'll going to swing the dial that old eyeball on this thing is getting old Let me turn the lights off. You know what they say, a plumber's house has always got stopped up drain. I'm adjusting the power factor. This shows me close to 50, wait, 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 close to 50 microfarad. That's not right at all. Let's just do voltage, uh, leak, uh, leakage. We'll check it on 150 volts and look at the eyeball, completely closed. That's on a 150 volt level right there. That's just how bad that capacitor is. And we'll switch, move it over to C65 now. We'll do the same exact thing. These two capacitors, I'm giant, we'll measure value. We'll measure on the 25 volt level. 25 volts, it's almost fully closed, guys. Come up to 450. We'll go up to 350. See how the eye got bright? So, we got another, another set of bad capacity. Um.
got another set of bad capacitors on this thing and that's part of the power supply so um, honestly should have checked those and changed them out while I was at it so this is not going to be a one episode or two episode repair this is going to be multiple stages of this uh, I've got a bunch of videos shot already from yesterday I've already downloaded it to my computer so I can have room on a, on a flash drive I'm going to add this to it and I think I'm going to make this a video it's going to be a to be continued and I want to work on this as I have the time and feel like it because honestly I got to study the circuitry on this to learn more how about how it works I can't just go in there and troubleshoot willy-nilly power supply was a big issue on this and still is until I change those other caps and there could be other caps in here bad tubes it's, it's going to be a this is going to be a long drawn out affair that I just ain't going to be able to do overnight I can't spend every day working on this thing so anyway I'm going to get the caps ordered and go ahead and process this video and get it out the door so I can move on and I got that Zenith television on my mind now so anyway thank you guys for watching have a great day God bless and like and subscribe alright comments down below uh, you want to cuss me out well you do it in person I like that better alright take care bye